Hi, it's Pat Duckworth, the author of Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo. And one thing that I love about being an entrepreneur is the amazing other entrepreneurs that I meet and then I'm able to interview them for this. And it's no different today. So my guest today works with ambitious female entrepreneurs to give them the fast track to getting more clients and making more money faster than they would do on their own. And let's face it, we all need a bit of that. Her mission is to help women create more success, impact and fulfillment in their business and in their lives. She's a mindset and emotional pattern expert with 22 years experience. She's worked with Tony Robbins and also privately with Jack Canfield. And she's got nine years experience in online marketing. So we want to hear what she's got to say. So it's a big welcome this morning to Emma Coombs. Hi, Emma. How are you doing? Uh, how are you doing? I'm really glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really nice to be talking to you. So um, I want to find out how all this started for you. How did your working life begin? Um, well, my working life began, obviously, in my 20s, I was... Um, I sort of got myself into project management. I was actually just doing, you know, the ordinary sort of admin or, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. And um, what I did was initially I worked on my mindset whilst I was traveling Peru and Brazil for three months. And I, when I came back to the UK, I more than tripled my income in that time. So I wasn't doing any work. I just, you know, bumped my income up. And then I was teaching other people how to do the same thing. And then um, sort of life pushed me, you know, out of that job because I ended up having kids. So I had uh, my first child in 2009 um, and going down the sort of conscious parenting route and, you know, attachment parenting, I decided I didn't want to go back into work, uh, which was obviously a really well paid career, but it was also not really fulfilling for me or meaningful. Um, you know, and I really wanted to do something and I had done for many years, but never really had the guts to you know, take a step out of the the corporate sort of side of things and actually go into my own business. Um, but, you know, having a child, you know, really sort of put me on that path because I really didn't want to leave him at the time. Um, so then I started looking around online. I was doing, um, you know, sort of doing a lot in online marketing and just um, that's when Facebook business pages first came out and I had um, a conscious parenting blog that was at the top of Google because I SEO'd it and got sort of things started that way and it was really sort of, sort of the parenting avenue I went into first and had the you know Facebook business page and all that kind of stuff I was just really passionate about it um, however I didn't monetize that and I was at home with my you know my young baby at the time uh, and then fast forward had another child and you know was um, doing other little bits online um, and going more into the mindset side of things and then eventually that's you know progressed and eventually I then became went into helping people with business because people were asking me you know how to do it how to get clients online and you know how to make money from Facebook or really just you know people doing what they actually love to do and I think a lot of women are really stepping out of that corporate world and going into you know what do I really actually want to do and you know we have the technology nowadays obviously to have and, and the flexibility to be able to work from home whether there's kids or no kids and just you know really create a, a life and a business that we absolutely you know love and enjoy and is right for us as well. Yeah, so that move from corporate into working for yourself can be a big step. How did you manage that? Um, it was it was kind of like I had no choice. I was a consultant at the time, so I didn't have maternity pay or anything like that. Um, I had money saved, so I came out of that um, job and I actually got sort of not laid off by my contract ended two months early because I was pregnant in a way but let's not go into that because they had they had to get rid of someone so obviously I was you know heavily pregnant it was going to be me um so I you know took some time off but it was just a matter of and you know there was a lot of learning in that in terms of actually managing yourself which I would say as a typical entrepreneurial brain I'm not that great at because I'm a great starter not so great at finishing and you know holding myself accountable so um but it was more like passion it was more um it was exciting at the time to be able to get online, especially back in 2009, which is God, almost 10 years ago, scary enough. Um, and you know, you could put your message out there and you could really build an audience and um, you know, you do all these little tech pieces and it would all work and you get people on your email list. It was just a really exciting thing to do. So for me, um, it was quite 
easy and natural. And I'd also done website work before as well. Like in about 2005, I was, again, I had my own website. I was working for a partner at the time, HTML and his website and everything. So I kind of had that background as well, a little bit with websites and getting websites to, you know, the top of Google. So I had that little bit of experience, but it was actually, it was more like I was kicked, you know, it, it was a, you know, life's way of kicking me in the butt to actually go and do it in a way. So that's, that's how I ended up doing it. I didn't have another choice. And how did you develop your passion around helping women to do this? What, what was it that appealed to you about that? I think I've always been interested in that, you know, in sort of the alternative side of life and helping people. Um, I sort of got into um, self-help, personal development back when I was 16, actually. And I've had a love for it ever since. And, you know, reading books, getting qualified in hypnotherapy when I was like 20, I think, and, you know, NLP and all that kind of stuff at my 20s. Um, and so I've always had this passion to help. I've always had this passion of being able to transform someone's life, you know, with whatever sort of modality, with whatever, whatever sort of tool or technique. And I think when I was helping people as well, um, again, it was an old boss of mine and so a few other people I knew. Um, they Again, they were going from like, say, 20K a year uh, to over six figures in salary, just in you know in a very short period of time, because I was just helping them do that. And I was so passionate about, you know, I've done it, you can do it too. And it just feels good. It's, it's contribution, you know what I mean? It's, and that's really fulfilling. So I've always had this sort of, I guess, knowing or just, you know, just the experience I went through, just knew that that would be something I wanted to do. And, you know, if, if you can do it, and I think, why not? Why would you ever want to live your life in a miserable place? And I've been in, you know, previous jobs uh, in finance, one of them actually, one of my contracts was in finance and it was just miserable and no one spoke to each other. The whole, you know, energy of the place was just depressing and it was, it was horrible. And I would never want to put most of my waking life into a place like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. I, a lot more women... Um, are going into being entrepreneurs and I think just as you said you know the internet is helping a lot with that it means you can be in business wherever you are but also a lot more women over 50 are becoming entrepreneurs now and um, I'm sure there's lots of different reasons for that but I'm sure one of those reasons is the same reason that I had when you turn around and think I've got to this age why would I want to go to work and be miserable and, you know, if you, like I did, find yourself crying on the way to work, mm. go and find something else to do. <laughs> I've had clients with that same story, many. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, you know, women uh, at midlife going through menopause as well. Mm -hmm. If you're going through all those hormonal shifts and, yeah. and not being treated well at work, and we could talk about that for quite some time. Um, mm. then it's time to find a way of doing something for yourself that you're really going to enjoy. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, so this is Pat Duckworth, and I'm talking to business coach Emma Coombs. And Emma, so where does your passion for coaching come from? And self-help as well. I mean, you've had that since you were so young. What, what drew you into that? I honestly don't know. I think it's just the way I'm wired because I literally picked up this book. I remember when I was 16, I picked up this book, my best friend's mother's book. Um, and I picked it up and I just literally could not put it down. It was like, I felt like I'd come home. And that's the only, I think it's just the way I'm wired and maybe what my personality is naturally. Um, and I just absolutely, every single weekend I was down WH Smith or whatever it was in those days, you know, down the mind, body, spirit section or whatever, and just like reading, reading, reading. And I've just loved it ever since. Like, you know, all throughout my twenties, I was like getting qualified in all different kinds of healing modalities, you know, self-help, you know, psychology type stuff. And, um, it has always been that way for me always. And I've just absolutely loved it. And I've always loved, you know, things that um, create a lot more speed and, you know, being able to transform people faster and get faster results, whether that's, you know, monetary results or personal development results. Um, but also what's, what's on the leading edge? You know, what are we, what are the new techniques coming in? What's mm -hmm. really working nowadays? Not something that's going to take, you know, a year to delve into your past just to get, you know, one result. I'm really, uh, you know, passionate about having it happen fast and um, again, I think that's just the way I'm wired, to be quite honest. So, so yeah. I think some people watch you might think, well, what is the mindset I need to be an entrepreneur? Can you just talk a bit more about that, how you work yeah. with people's mindset? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, 
in terms of what is the mindset to be an entrepreneur, I think most of people, most of the people that want to be an entrepreneur would probably naturally have that mindset. It is a bit more of a risk taker, definitely solution focused. You need to be, you know, positive, can do, you know, because we all go through, especially as entrepreneurs, when you don't have that, you know, certain salary coming in, let's say, it is going to be, there's always going to be ups and downs in everything. And there's going to be different income coming in most months, probably. And it's really having the ability to see solutions in every situation and to, uh, you know, even if you have a down day or a down moment or whatever it is, pick yourself back up and keep going. And it really is that consistency. And, you know, I always say there is no failure as long as you keep going. If you give up, then you failed. But um, if you if you never give up and you have that sort of um, tenacity almost, then you're never going to fail, you know. And um, no matter how you know bad it might get or whatever it might be in, in terms of your life or wherever, you know, wherever you're sort of at in the moment if you are just starting a business there's always an answer there's always a solution it's just having that mindset because that's when actually you see things because your brain will literally see what you believe like we will literally your unconscious mind literally tunes stuff out if you don't believe it's there for example opportunities or you know sales opportunities or whatever it might be um, and for me personally I do a lot of work with the unconscious because I'm a hypnotherapist so I will often take people, uh, say someone has a fear of public speaking or someone has some kind of visibility block in terms of getting out there, or often it can be around, um, you know, sales, because a lot of women mm. especially feel uncomfortable with selling. Um, and we just look at what is the actual underlying belief in that. And often I can pick it out, out in people pretty easily. Um, and sometimes we'll, you know, go back to maybe an original event. I'll give you an example with my own story. I um, was online, I think, in one of my businesses for probably about, I'd say like almost to 18 months and I wasn't really making much money, maybe a couple of hundred pounds a, a month. Um, and it, I knew it wasn't my money mindset because I'd earned so much in my career before, right? But what happened was I got to this place where um, there was this memory that came up when I was a kid and um, my dad had, you know, he was always kind of a bit of a stingy kind of father in that case. He wasn't the one to tip or anything like that. And I remember me asking him for like 10 pounds or something. And I remember him throwing his wallet at me and said, here, take my money or whatever and getting really angry. And at the time I felt so much shame, you know, like I was mm. a bad person for asking for money. And in that moment, because often we make uh, key decisions as Tony Robbins calls it in certain times of our life, I made the decision that I was a bad person for asking someone for money. Yeah. So obviously that had a knock on effect in my selling. And when I dealt with that memory and that um, association I'd made, that belief, I went from a couple of hundred pounds to multiple five figures in 30 days. Yeah. And that's how I sold just because I, I'd released that unconscious memory because I didn't even remember it that was actually holding me back from selling. So Yeah, these, these memories we have around money that often form when we were, when we were really young and we were trying to make sense of things. I, yeah. Christmas for me always brings back a memory of, um, you know, we're really going back in the day here of my, my auntie giving me a 10 shilling note. And I, I must have been really quite young. And I was so excited because 10 shillings was quite a lot. 50p yeah. now for those of you who are really wow. young it's only 50 pence okay but it's yeah. like a lot of money and it was a note yeah. and um yeah. and somehow in all the christmas stuff it got mixed up with the empty envelopes and the wrapping paper and we used to have a little stove and it all it got burnt in the stove and when i looked for my tensioning note it was gone mm. and my father we both had these fathers turn around to me and said, let that be a lesson to you. You have to be careful with money. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now that kind of memory going in with that message from somebody you love and respect forms a such a strong belief um, that you have to sort of notice what that does to you in your business. So yeah, this mindset stuff is absolutely crucial to get sorted out. Totally. And it's often when there's a, a strong emotional connection there, because yes. we often remember things when there's a strong emotion, right? So there's, yeah, totally. So it's really Christmas and dad and excitement and presents and you must yeah. be careful with money. Mm. And yeah. I can definitely report he didn't give me a 10 shilling note. He didn't go, so here's, you know, it was like, this is the lesson. So then, you know, this fear factor gets in as well. So yeah, huge amounts of emotion. And whatever your experiences were with your parents and money, it will have had an influence on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's worth getting it sorted out. Good. So what does success mean to you now? 
Success for me, I think, is it's not about money. It's really about fulfillment. And especially as women, I think um, it's so important that we are really living a life on purpose that's meaningful to us that we have enough balance and time for ourselves as well as our you know families as well as our you know self-care as well as our work or whatever we're doing and actually to be fulfilled because you know a lot of people are sell you know have been sold or you know we are sold in society the dream of like six or seven figures or more money or more things or whatever it is like all this you know material possessions or you need this or you need that and ultimately these things, they might be exciting at first, but they don't actually bring happiness. And I think, you know, for me, success is really what actually creates me to be happy in my life. What are my values and how can I live in alignment with my values? Because that's the only way I'm going to be happy. And how can I have a balanced life where all of these parts of my life, my social life, my self-care, my work or career or business, um, my relationship, all these things are sort of working in harmony and actually working well. And actually having it all as well, you know, not just having one working and the other's not. So that to me is what success really is about. Yeah, fantastic. So do you have a top tip or some top tips for new entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I see with new entrepreneurs is really actually making a decision. A lot of people, and I did this myself, go around in circles as to do I want to do this or that? Should I work with this ideal client or that ideal client? And the truth is, you will never know until you get get out there, take action and find out. And the best form of feedback is actually to go out there and do it and say, you know what, actually, this is not my ideal client. This is not what I want to do, but at least I, I know now and I probably earned some money whilst I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if you just sit there and go around in circles, you get nowhere and you just wasted time just thinking you're never going to get the answer from thinking you're really going to need to go out there and take action so i'd say one of my top tips is actually to go out of there and just make a decision and they always say like successful people make fast decisions and i do agree with that you know in in a lot of ways make a decision commit to it for say three months and just do it and just go out there and and, yeah as well obviously get the coach or the mentor get the information you need to actually know how to navigate this online space because it's changing all the time like even from when i started it's massively changed like even in the past year or 18 months is changing all the time facebook algorithms all this kind of stuff and you really need to keep up to date with what's happening um so i would say always make sure that you are growing yourself and growing your knowledge as well in terms of marketing because ultimately if you're going to have an online business you need to know how to market even if you're not a marketer you need to learn that skill you need to have that skill and also sales as well and although you know it might feel a bit like you know almost like you want to push that away you need to get good at sales if you can sell and you know how to market, you'll be fine in any industry, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've seen uh, people who are just born salespeople and they could sell you anything. I've just come back from Morocco and, you know, if you've ever been to Morocco, you know that they have centuries of experience in selling and they can sell you anything. Mm, and they're yeah. funny with it and engaging and um you, you know that you will never get the best of that deal <laughs> yeah I've, I've been to egypt and it's probably pretty similar to that yeah. <laughs> you could you can learn a lot from just yeah. watching what happens yeah. and yeah it's really fantastic mm-hmm. so emma people watching if they want to find out more about you how can they do that the best thing to do is actually come to my Facebook profile, I would say, because a lot of my content now goes out on Facebook, my Facebook profile simply because of the algorithm on Facebook. Um, so the best thing to do is just um, friend request me on Facebook and you can always PM me if you want to find out more or, you know, contact me in any way. I'm more than happy, very accessible and more than happy to chat to anyone that wants to chat. So, And you've got something exciting coming up for people in the new year, haven't you? I have. I'm starting a program. It's called Get Clients in 90 Days. Uh, it's a three month program and it's a very, very small group where I give a lot of individual one on one attention and really sort of bespoke support to individuals that may they may know what they want to do and they may not know what they want to do. But my aim is to really get you out there and earning money as fast as possible. And not only give you the strategies to do that, but also obviously help you with the mindset piece. So you get a lot of, you know, that one-on-one sort of in-person access to me, not only in a private Facebook group, but also um, we have hot seat calls every two weeks. So that's what I'm, yeah, putting out there. So if you're interested in that, do just contact me and um, we'll have a chat to see if it's right for you. Yeah. Yeah. So send Emma a friend request if you're interested so that you can find out more about her program, say that Pat sent you. And uh, or that you've seen her on here and then she'll know where, where you've come from. So thank you so much for that. It's been really lovely talking to you. What have we learned today? So as entrepreneurs, we need to have that ability to take risks. 
and we also need to take action and be prepared to fail. It doesn't always go right, but as long as you're taking action, you're falling forward, you're finding out the next thing and finding out how it's gonna work for you. And watching out for your mindset, what are the beliefs that might be holding you back and what can you do about them? So lots we can take for this conversation. Thank you so much, Emma. No worries. It's been great to uh, speak to you and hopefully that's um, been valuable for anyone yeah. watching this on, the, on Facebook. Excellent. So thank you to everybody who's watching and keep watching out for more of these interviews with amazing entrepreneurs so that we can keep learning the lessons. I'll see you next time.